Hello people, I'm going to show you how to make this video here, this particle ember thing that I made quite some time ago. It's very simple, um, let's get started quickly. Um, just open a new composition, uh, right click in this project window, new composition, uh, make whatever size you want, I've got 720p, 1280 by 720 at 25 frames. Um, Make a new solid, 1280 by 720, and to it apply a uh, trap code particular. I'm using version two. Okay, go to the put the playhead to the start of the um, timeline. Go into the emitter tab and put a keyframe at the beginning. Thirty thousand particles. Um, at about half a second, <clears throat> another keyframe, zero particles per second, so it just stops emitting about half a second. Okay, next thing I'm going to bump the velocity up to about 150, uh, velocity random for I reckon about 80. Nice. So that means the uh, velocity of the particles just looks far more random, they're not all the same speed, some are going slower, some are going quicker. Um, go down to the particle settings, uh, we'll leave in the life 3 seconds, um, we're going to bump the life random up to say 80, just so some die a little quicker, some live a little longer. Um, I'm going to leave the particle type on sphere, I'm going to change the sphere to zero feathering, um, for now I'm going to put the size down to 1, but I may decrease that further later on, just so I can see it. Um, I'll leave it at 1. Size random, 100%. Really make it look nice and random. Um, opacity 100, no, opac uh, no opacity random. Opacity over life though, I am going to do a slant, so it does fade out, but I'm going to add uh, these random little spikes which will give it like a sparkly effect just click randomly at the top here you probably could use this preset but I'm gonna make my own one okay a few lower ones kinda wish there was an easy way to do this okay And <clears throat> cool. Let's get a little preview. I'm going to um, just bring the duration down to about six seconds and preview. Okay, I'm at full resolution. I don't have much RAM, so it's not letting me preview the entire six seconds, but you can sort of see where they start to sparkle at the end of their life. Beautiful. All right. <clears throat> The next thing we're going to do is give it a little bit of physics. Go down to the physics tab. Oops. Um, make sure your physics model is set to air. Under the air tab, we will uh, give it some wind on the Z axis. Now, <clears throat> before we go any further, we're going to add a new camera 50 millimeter camera. Excellent. Um, now, in this top views up here, I've got four views here. Um, now, I've clicked four views top, so the four views appear at, well, there's three orthographic views and one um, view of your choice, I guess. I've got the active camera set in this main view, and there's obviously top, front, and left in the top here. Now, the reason this is good is because when we're dealing with depth of field and camera positioning, um, we can see quite easily where the particles are in relation to where the camera is focused. So here you can see the focal length of the camera. If I activate depth of field, the focal length is way past where the particles are. So if I decrease the focal distance, you can see that line pulls in closer and everything intersecting with that line is in perfect focus. So. Um, because I put some wind in, it sort of drifts in front of the camera like that. 
what I might do is just put the focal distance about here. <coughs> Alright, um, we'll fix up the depth of field later on. For now, I'm actually going to turn it off in the rendering tab in particular, so it renders a little quicker. Um, off. Um, Alright, let's give it some physics. Air model. Alright, we've got wind, so they're blowing towards the camera. Let's give it a little bit of turbulence. Um, I'm going to click the effect position and about 500. <clears throat> so as you can see, the uh, the turbulence is affecting the position of the particles at a range of 500. Um, the fade in time, I might put that to one second. That way the physics kick in over the first second of the animation, of the emission of the particles. Um, I'm going to drop the scale of the turbulence down to 5 and the complexity of it down to 2. Alright, I'm going to get under motion preview because my computer is a piece of crap. Preview the motion. Hmm. Interesting. Let's go half. 50%. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Um, what we'll do now is, I think that's about it for um, adjusting the particle settings. Um, let's give it a little bit of color. Um, for the color, I use trap code particular, sh uh, sorry, trap code shine, and set the ray length right down to zero. And that gives it a pretty cool. Um, sort of glowy effect, fiery effect. Um, I might boost, put the boost light up to about 4. You can do the same color effect with um, <clears throat> a number of other effects in the color correction tab, you know, colorama, toner, tint. You can use a variety of different things to uh, color it up, but I'm just using this because it's simple and easy. Alright, down to colorize, I'm going to choose a 5 gradient color and I'm going to make the first two color boxes white, the next two yellow, and the last one kind of more of an orange, not too red, nice and orange. Beautiful. Alright. Maybe a bit more red. Nice fiery look. Mm, nice. <coughs> I'll make that middle one just a little bit brighter too. Okay, let's give it some motion blur under the particular effect. Scroll right down to rendering and you'll see motion blur. Take that off comp setting, put it onto on. We drop the shutter angle to 180 so it's not too streaky. And we're going to put the opacity boost up to 50 so it's not so transparent. That's nice. Maybe a bit less, maybe 40. Mm, good. Awesome. Alright. Set that to half for now. What we're going to do next is turn on the depth of field. Uh, it's already on, but we're going to adjust it a bit. We're going to turn the blur right up. Right up. 400. Oops. Um got to make sure we turn it back on in um, the render settings of particular camera. Yes, beautiful. Drop the aperture down to about 35, even maybe 500. Beautiful, look at that. That's nice. That's looking pretty cool. That's nearly just about it. Um, you can do some other things if you want to correct it more. You can put a, um, <coughs> you can put like a uh, exposure effect on if you want to be a bit brighter. You can adjust the color settings and all that sort of thing. Um, the one thing I'll do is put a gradient, a nice gradient in the background. Effect, uh, generate ramp. I'm just going to change this to a very dull yellow and black. Radial. Um, I 
Just pop that in the center. Check this out, so I got more of a glow effect. Okay, might brighten it up a little. Done. Beautiful. And that's looking pretty good. I might just do a quick, uh, just save it. Might just do a quick RAM preview. So it looks like. And what we have is some very nice looking fire embers. Zoom out a little. Hmm. Awesome. Um, I might drop the blur of the depth of field here in the camera setting. It's just a little too much. That's better. Cool. That looks pretty good. There you have it. Something else I might do is just chuck on a little so it looks like with a bit of a glow. Um, Stylized glow. Okay. Just need some serious editing. Point two intensity. Um, glow radius fifteen. Point one intensity. Yeah, it looks pretty dodgy. A and B colors. Yellowish glow here. Anyway, play around with it. I don't really like the glow to be honest. I might take that off. Anyway, that was basically how I did it. And pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.